welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're taking a look at the latest estate car from AMG, the new C63. We also have some aero sculpted EVs from Volkswagen and Hyundai, plus a six-figure resto mod Ferrari. And finally, we'll be showcasing Audi's new concept car, the incredible Active Sphere. That's all coming up. First, though, some news. Porsche is to expand its electric lineup as testing of an electric Macan begins. A bespoke EV SUV is on the way, with suggestions that it could replace the ICE Macan altogether. Building on its existing Taycan technology, Porsche reckons that six of its models will be electric by the end of the decade, with an electric Cayman also in the works. Making use of the Volkswagen Group's scalable systems platform, an electric version of the next-generation Panamera has been confirmed due for release in 2027. However, the end of 2022 saw a drop-off of take and sales, with the 911 beating it to the best-selling non-SUV Porsche of the year. The Stuttgart brand, though, seemingly has no plans of halting its combustion car production just yet, having recently announced that a 911 had run on man-made synthetic fuel for the first time. Hyundai is no stranger to electric cars. From the relatively mundane Ionic to the fabulous Ionic 5 and the extremely sensible Kona Electric, the South Korean brand's EV selection is unquestionably impressive. And now its electric stable is about to get even better with the introduction of this, the all-new Ionic 6. With a dramatic aerodynamic shape, it is certainly eye-catching. Low-slung, swoopy saloons aren't in vogue right now, but that only adds to the Six's appeal. Until now, shapes like this were the reserve of expensive German cars, with this new design a clue to Hyundai's premium ambitions. With a starting price of well over £47,000, the Ionic 6 is proof of the brand's confidence that it can compete with the likes of Mercedes and Tesla, and we can see no reason why it can't. The Ionic 6 looks brilliant with elegant curves that contrast the blocky retro Ionic 5. The rear end is a little less accomplished with a slightly awkward looking double spoiler setup, but it's all in the name of efficiency and aerodynamics. It uses the same platform as the marginally cheaper Ionic 5, but gets a bigger range thanks to its slippery shape. Spec it correctly and the 6 will achieve an impressive 338 miles on a charge. Entry-level cars get rear-wheel drive and 225 brake horsepower, capable of 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.4 seconds. A 321 bhp all-wheel drive model is also on the way with much more acceleration, although range is decreased to 322 miles. Step inside the Ionic 6 and you are greeted by a clean, modern interior that feels ever so slightly posher than the 5s. It gets two 12-inch screens with two extra screens in the corners of the dash if you spec your car with the digital door mirrors. There is some colourful ambient lighting and a so-called EV performance tune-up system, which allows you to tweak everything from pedal sensitivity to how much effort your steering requires. There's also rumour of a hotted up N version too, with more power. For now though, the Ionic 6 is not without its foibles. As you might expect from such a swept back roofline, rear headroom is not great, while the front boot is far from spacious. So what else is there in this class? Well, if you're after a premium small saloon, we're better to look than BMW.
This is the i4, and for all intents and purposes, it's an electric 3 Series, albeit one with some 4 Series styling. Despite launching in 2021 at £40,000, the 2023 price list starts at £56,000, grand, rising to almost £70,000 if you tick the right boxes. The base model eDrive 40 produces 335 brake horsepower, all of which is sent to the rear wheels. 0 to 62 is dealt with in 5.7 seconds, not as quick as the range-topping Hyundai, but quicker than the standard rear-driven model. The interior feels every bit the BMW, with quality materials throughout and an attractive design in keeping with the rest of BM's lineup. However, like the Ionic 6, it also comprises space in the back, despite its more traditional saloon car silhouette. The key figure, though, is range. 365 for the BMW, a significant increase over the Hyundai, but it does come at a £10,000 premium. The Ionic 6 then does seem like good value. The base model may not be the quickest EV out there, but with good range and a great design, it is sure to win over buyers when it arrives in dealerships this summer. Late last year, Mercedes-AMG revealed its new C63, an occasion that would normally light the fires of car enthusiasts the world over. Famous for packing an enormous V8 engine into a compact saloon, it's no wonder the model became so popular. This time, though, the reception was far more muted. Why was that? Well, let's take a look at this C63 SE Performance Estate to find out. The estate model has always been our personal favourite, adding that extra dose of practicality to what is otherwise a brute in a suit. But this time the C63 has a problem, it's an engine. You see this all new AMG doesn't have a fire breathing V8, instead it has the same hybrid 2 litre 4 pot as the lower spec C43, ouch. The heart and soul of the old car is gone then, but let's not be too quick to judge. After all, it produces a staggering 671 brake horsepower. To achieve this huge number from such a small engine, Mercedes has deployed some of its Formula One know-how with an electric exhaust gas turbocharger. The result is the world's most powerful four-cylinder engine at 469 brake horsepower, with the resulting power coming from the electric motor mounted on the rear axle. However, the lack of a V8 rumble isn't this car's biggest problem. The problem is the weight. This is a small estate car with a 2-litre engine, yet somehow it weighs more than 2.1 tonnes. That's more than a Land Rover Discovery Sport. That immense mass comes from the batteries and all-wheel drive system, among other things that just a few years ago were not deemed necessary on a small performance car. The sheer power, though, is enough to produce some impressive straight-line numbers. 0-62 mph is dealt with in 3.4 seconds, while the top speed is 173 if you spec yours without the electronic limiter. For now, the Merc only has one real rival when it comes to little fast estates, the new BMW M3 Touring. For decades, we've been crying out for an M3 wagon, and now we finally have it. Unlike the Merc, it does without a hybrid system, using a twin-turbo straight-six instead. It is significantly less powerful than the Merc at 503 brake horsepower, but it's also a fair bit lighter and certainly no slouch, being 62 from rest in 4 seconds. The Merc then may have its work cut out when it hits the showrooms, but with the BMW's divisive styling, we're not sure which one will prove to be the most popular. Elegant curves, simplistic styling, and a hands-on driving experience. These are just some of the positives classic cars offer. There are, however, some downsides. Reliability tends to be the main one, fuel economy, emissions, and in some cases, frighteningly high values that put you off using them. To combat these impracticalities, more and more companies are creating modernized versions of our favorite poster cars. 
One of these companies is RML, and this is their latest jaw-dropping creation. A homage to the iconic 1950s Ferrari, the RML short wheelbase is a modern take on a classic shape. We first saw it last year with testing only just getting underway, but now customer cars are in production, although only 30 are to be built. It isn't an exact replica. Its modern lights and big wheels give that away, but rather a tribute to one of Maranello's greatest creations. Under the 1960s racer styling is a late 1990s Ferrari 550 chassis, albeit with a few key modifications. All new dampers and anti-roll bars have been fitted to adapt the 550 GT's handling, along with some grippy Pirelli tyres. Powering Frankenstein's Ferrari is the 550's glorious 5.5-litre naturally aspirated V12, good for 487 brake horsepower and 0-62 in a shade over 4 seconds. Prices are unsurprisingly pretty steep at £1.6 million. However, if you apply logic and common sense to the matter, that's a fraction of the cost of an original Ferrari 250, so consider it a bargain. After the break of VW EV and Audi's latest concept car. Coming up, Audi's new Active Sphere concept, but first. Following on from its success with the ID3 and ID4 EVs, Volkswagen is back with its newest EV, and it's called, you guessed it, the ID5. From the outside, you'd be forgiven for thinking the ID5 and ID4 are the same model. In fact, aside from the coupe shape at the rear end and slightly reworked bumpers, the design is pretty much unchanged, though that's far from being a problem. The intense work to make this coupe SUV as aerodynamic and efficient as possible is clear from almost any angle. The streamlined design makes for beautifully clean curves flowing from front to rear. They're accentuated even further by the creases that run down the length of the doors. From the front, the ID5's design is brought in line with other modern VW creations thanks to a bar of daytime running lights. A large face, unflatteringly large wheels and a fairly low ride height for its class make for quite the chunky design. In true EV style, the ID5's interior is nice and spacious thanks to the flat floor. There's plenty of legroom throughout, although space in the rear is hit ever so slightly by the shallower roofline. Taking centre place on the dashboard is a large, high-resolution infotainment screen using an updated version of VW's ID software and alongside new voice control and ambient lighting features, this new system brings a better navigation system. Using We Connect, it can find real-time information on traffic, routes and all important charging stations. Speaking of charging, it's probably time to address the biggest talking point of any electric car. The ID5 will manage an impressive 320 miles on a single charge, according to WLTP figures. The entry-level ID5 Pro and mid-range Pro performance variants send power to the rear wheels and produce 174 and 204 brake horsepower, respectively. It's the sporty GTX, though, that tops the ID5 tree. 
The GTX introduces an extra motor on the front axle of the ID5, giving it all-wheel drive while the power figures have been increased to 299 horsepower. All this is enough to help it reach 60 from a standstill in 6.3 seconds. Not rapid in EV terms, but not bad for a family SUV. Styling-wise, the GTX gets a few tweaks to help it stand out. The front end's oddly large lower grille has gone through reduction surgery, while the rear end gets a sporty rear wing. But if the ID.5 wants top honours in this class, it will need to beat this, the remarkable Kia EV6. Arguably more driver-focused, top-of-the-range cars get 321 brake horsepower with drive sent to all four wheels. 0-62 mph is dealt with in just 5.2 seconds, which ought to be enough to worry even the hottest of hatchbacks. If outright pace isn't such a priority, there is a cheaper rear-wheel drive version. It gains a couple of seconds in the 0-60 sprint, but its 114 miles per hour remains the same. In the UK, both versions get the same 77.4 kilowatt hour battery, with less powerful 226 brake horsepower single motor cars getting the greater range at 328 miles. 14 more than the top spec car can manage. Kia is on top of its game lately, and the EV6 is a great example of just how far the Korean brand has come in the last two decades. Both the Volkswagen and the Kia are fine electric cars, but this time it's the Kia that gets our vote. Audi has been on a bit of a roll of late when it comes to concept cars. A particular favourite of ours was last year's Grand Sphere, a luxury four-door saloon with gorgeous Zagato-like styling and an interior that transformed into a living room at the push of a button. And now Audi has revealed the next car in its Sphere series, the Active Sphere. With more than 20 new Audis scheduled to arrive in the next three years, the Active Sphere is ever so slightly closer to being production ready than the Grand Sphere, although it is still packed to the rafters with concept car strangeness. It's a high riding coupe SUV with some off road flavour. Audi has previously said it wants to build a Land Rover Defender and Mercedes G Class rival. This could well be it. OK, it isn't a boxy 4x4 with square windows and sharp edges, but with its all-terrain tyres and underbody production, this could well be Audi's first true off-roader. In its standard setting, the Active Sphere sits fairly low to the ground, but the air suspension can raise it by 80mm ready to tackle some G-Class and Defender obstacles. The body cladding is there to protect it from knocks and bumps and can be folded in and out depending on your drive mode, although whether or not it makes it to production remains to be seen. The trick micro LED lighting could see the production line though. The front and rear daytime running lights are filled with tiny LEDs that can change patterns. Perhaps the standout feature of the Active Sphere though is the deployable rear deck effectively turning this sleek coupe SUV into a pickup truck like no other, ideal for storing your e-bikes and other lifestyle accessories. We've no doubt it could also transport hay, farm animals or building supplies, but that somehow doesn't quite fit this car's image. It is very cool though, the rear window slides over the car's roof while a glass bulkhead rises out of the floor behind the rear seats. Further adding to the Actosphere's versatility is a roof rack perfect for ski holidays. As futuristic as it may look though, this left field concept is built on an existing platform. It gets an electric motor on each axle and a 100 kilowatt hour battery capable of 270 kilowatt charging. The range is said to be 373 miles while a 10 minute top up can add 186 miles. It puts out a healthy 436 brake horsepower, getting this big coupe from 0 to 62 in 4.9 seconds. Not bad for a car taking on the rugged off-roaders from Land Rover and Mercedes. 
It's all very impressive, featuring tech we can see making it to production. One part of the car that probably won't, however, is the interior. With its cocooned seating and fold-away steering wheel, it's all very much a concept car in here. That's before we get to the mixed reality glasses. Yep, the Actosphere concept comes with sets of glasses for its occupants, allowing them to blend reality with the digital world. Using augmented visual controls appearing as holograms around the cabin, the user can operate everything from the climate control to the sat-nav with their VR goggles, allowing for a clean and cluttered dashboard with very few physical controls to speak of. Audi reckons that this tech could be implemented when level 4 autonomy becomes the norm, but for now the Actosphere is best appreciated as a preview of Audi's forthcoming coupe off-roader. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out the quietest muscle car yet, the all-new electric Corvette E-Ray.